Today, I play the largest game I've ever played in in my entire poker career. The blinds are $25 and $50, and we buy in for a whopping $50,000 of cold hard cash in the middle. We battle it out against Texas's best in this live stream game here at Rounders in San Antonio. We play some really large pots. Will I punt it off or will I stack a bunch of people? Only one way to find out. Let's get the cards in the air. With $50,000 in our stack, let's hop into this 25-50 game and one of the very first hands of the stream. We pick up queen 10 off suit in the cutoff. We're playing seven handed and I decide to open things up to $200 when action folds to me. Here we get called in two spots, the small blind and big blind. So off to a flop of 1085 rainbow. Pretty good flop for me with top pair, so when action checks to me, I'm gonna throw out a bet of $500, and we only get the small blind to make the call. Off to a turn which comes in ace. Pretty much a brick on this board in my opinion. I think he rarely has an ace in this situation, so when he checks to me, I think I'm gonna go for some more value as tons of worse one pair or draws can call. I size up to $1,000 in this spot, and for 1,000, he decides on making the call once again. Now we're off to a river, which comes another ace, and he checks to me for a third time. I'm not concerned at all about this ace now, as it's very much unlikely he has an ace now. But the thing is, I'm not sure what I get value from by betting this river. There just doesn't seem to be enough hands that I can get called by, but I still regardless go for it. I bet out $2,300 and we are put into an unfortunately tough spot to start the session as he decides to check jam all in for about 7,500 left in the stack. It's a pretty sick and gross spot to be in here and I'm pretty much thinking that he's only repping a full house as a high majority of his trips holdings would just call. He can have a lot of sets like pocket eights, pocket fives, pocket 10 seems fairly unlikely, or pretty much just ace five or ace eight for value, which isn't a lot. But when I think about his combination of bluffs, there's a lot of 6-7 open-ended, jack-9 open-ended, pair and gut shot straight draws. So given a good price, I just talk myself into a call. And of course we're wrong. Unfortunate to start here, a little bit of a blunder and mistake to start the session. Some bad play on my part, but we're gonna try to battle back with the whole stream left to play. In the second hand here, trying to battle back early on, with 10-9 of hearts on the button, there is a $100 straddle on and action folds to me. I raise it up to $400 in position, folds to the straddler who decides to three bet to $1,400. We're in position, we have a good hand and for $1,000 more, we're not going anywhere, I make the call. Heads up, the flop comes king nine six to diamonds and he surprisingly checks to me on a board that should definitely smash him more than me. I am definitely going to just check back with middle pair for now and see what happens. When the turn comes, the king of hearts, it's a great card to see for the same reason why I wasn't too scared of an ace on the river when it paired. Definitely not afraid of a king now, and he checks to me for a second time. Definitely going to go for some value and protect my second pair. I size up to a bet of $1,000, and for 1,000, one-third pot, he makes the call. Off to a river now, hoping to just see a brick. It's a queen. Card over our pair, pretty gross, don't really love seeing that. He checks to me and I'm happy to quickly check this one back. And he shows us ace jack for ace jack high and nice to chip up and win this one. In the next spot, there is an early position open to $325. Two players make the call and on to me. We're in the small blind and we look down at a pretty good hand with ace queen off suit versus a bunch of players that are interested in this pot right now. Being out of position kind of sucks, so I three bet to a larger sizing of 2100. Definitely going to be three betting a lot of my stronger hands here in this spot. And when action is back over to this early position player, he thinks about it for a while and ends up shipping his whole stack of over $11,000. The players who call the 325 get the hell out of the way and back onto me. This is certainly an annoying spot to be in with ace, queen. Don't love it as we can be dominated very easily by hands like ace, king as well. So for 11,000, I am just going to fold and let it go. But 
This was a very easy way to lose $2,100 at a snap of a finger. In the following hand, Ace, Deuce of Spades. We're first to act and decide to open things up to $250 with the $100 straddle on. And we get no less than four players to make the call around. So we're on an action fun table. Off to a flop of Ace, Jack, Eight, all diamonds. We have top pair, which is good, but multi-way, all diamonds on the board. I'm going to just check this one and see what develops on later streets. Action checks all the way around. Off to a turn which comes a queen. There's really not a whole lot of cards I wanted to see, but this one connects to the board pretty hard. 10-9 is now a straight, a lot of two pair combos. I check once again, and the player on my left bets out $500. Seems like no one else on the table has much as action folds to me, and as played, I don't think I can fold one pair and top pair for now. I make the call. We're off to a river which is the five of hearts. This is one of those brick cards we wanted to see, so Nothing really changes here on this board. I check for a third time. He bets out $1,000 and gonna have to bluff catch against this specific opponent. I make the call and he unfortunately flips over queen eight off suit as the graphics on screen were wrong. So he has two pair, he takes it down. Pretty unfortunate there, but not a whole lot going right for me so far in this session. We haven't picked up too many pots and we're trying to turn it around. This time with Queen 10 of clubs in the cutoff, there is a $200 straddle on board. An early position player opens it up to $500. Onto me, we're in position of him and in the cutoff. I can go either way with a call or three bets and I wanna apply more pressure on some weaker holdings he might be raising with. So I three bet to 1500. Action folds to the player in the straddle and he thinks about it for a while and ultimately ends up landing on a call. Back on this early position player who we don't see his cards unfortunately, but it doesn't matter too much as he decides on a fold. So we're off to a flop, heads up, and it comes pretty darn good in queen, queen, three, two hearts. Pretty good flop and we should be betting here a lot of the time, but I decided to take a check check line this time with trips and we're off to see a turn which is a brick city deuce of spades. He now leads in the spot for $1,500, and I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to get more money in the middle. I think raising here sometimes make a lot of sense as he could have a lot of pocket pairs in this spot, but I just call for now and hoping to see another brick river and maybe get some more value. The river comes the jack of hearts, front door hearts get there, but it shouldn't be too relevant given the action. He checks to me now, and I'm definitely going to throw out a bet I'm gonna size a little bit smaller to $2,300 and onto him, he thinks about it for a long while before ultimately ends up folding. So we didn't make a ton of money or we could have made a lot more than we did this time, but I have no complaints as we make back about $3,500 in this hand. In the spot after that, we're on the button with ace deuce of hearts. The player to my right in the cutoff opens it up to $350 with a suited ace. This is gonna be fun to play, I make the call. That entices the small blind and straddle to call as well. So another multi-way flop, which comes king, jack, six, two hearts. We finally got a flush draw here. I don't think we've ever made a flush on this live stream trip just yet in over two weeks. So it's gonna be a great time to do it now in this 2550 game. Action checks to the cutoff who bets out $550 multi-way. We're certainly not going to go anywhere. I make the call and the small blind comes along and calls as well. So we're going three ways to the turn with the pot building. It comes the six of hearts. Bink, let's go baby. We got the flush, but the board is paired. Shouldn't be too concerned about that for now. And we definitely aren't when action checks to me. I elect on betting a small sizing of $1,200. We essentially have the nuts and we wanna get paid, so 1200 to go. Small blind folds, but luckily the cutoff decides to give us some action and makes the call. We're off to a river which comes the nine of hearts. It wasn't really the river I wanted to see as it's harder to get value from any pairs now, but it doesn't matter. He decides to bet out $3,500 and I'm obviously not folding. Is there any merit to raising here? And ultimately I think about it and I think no. Board is paired, it's gonna be hard for worse hands to call a raise anyways, so I just make the call. He shows me the bluff and our ace of heart is gonna be good. And we take down a big one, we are back to chipping up almost out of the hole. 
In the following spot, looks like things are going better. We have Ace Jack of Hearts in the low jack, and I decide to raise it up to $300. And once again, we're on an action heavy table. Four players around make the call, so going five ways to a flop. The flop comes Ace, 10, 6, Rainbow. It is a pretty safe and dry flop for us with top pair. Action checks to me, and I'm gonna bet $500 here multi-way, and we get the button and big blind to make the call. Going to a turn, which comes the five of clubs. So still, we feel pretty good about our one pair holding, although we got called in two spots. The big blind checks to me, and I think here, a little bit of a mistake, I bet out $1,200 when an action's onto me. It's a little bit on the smaller side, and I think we can go a little bit larger, um, given the dynamics at the table where the button player is playing a lot of hands. But for $1,200, we only get one player to call on the button. So still, we're hoping to win this one. The river is the nine of diamonds. We're out of position. The board looks pretty terrible for just one pair, especially a weak one pair at that. So not thinking we can get too much value from worse holdings. I check to him, who quickly checks it back, show my ace jack, and surprisingly we win. It was nice to see that we dodged any king, six, or club. Happy to win it. One of the last interesting spots into this session. We are almost officially out of the hole from the punt in the first hand. Momentum is really going our way, and it's getting better as we look down at pocket kings and see one of the tighter players at the table raised to $600 in the small blind. I haven't seen him raise much this session. It must be a pretty good hand given the position, so I decided to three bet and put in a raise to 2,000. Action folds to the small blind who thinks about it for a while, has to rescan his cards as they didn't scan for some reason, but Ultimately, after thinking things over, he ends up ripping it all in. He jams $11,000 total and snippity snap, let's go, baby. Let's try to scoop this one. It is 22,000 in the middle. We obviously aren't folding kings here in this spot, and we're off to a run out just one board. The question oh. was, maybe Kenan, I don't know. Kenan may have queens. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. He like, said, yeah, he again, said, Kenan oh. looked, yeah, he looked super comfortable oh, the whole course, hand. yeah. Jack, five, Jack is six, deuce. Need a king and a king only. Sadly, oh. we show our kings, and uh, wow, we, we looked. We, we see he has aces, so that's pretty gross. We won aces versus kings in the smaller 1-2 games, and now we lose kings to aces in this 25-50 game. Uh, that's, that's pretty tough, pretty gross. Not feeling happy about this hand. <sighs> another live stream, another not great session. Oh man, I don't know what about it. I don't know what it is uh, with these live streams and like these shot taking opportunities and just getting smoked. First hand that we played was a, a bona fide punt on a silver platter to Chaz over there. But unfortunately, we were actually able to climb up to like just about even. We were just about even and clawing back after a whole night. And then we get kings. <sighs> that didn't go well. End of the day, we'll talk about some numbers. We bought into the game for 90,000. Out of the game for 78,410. So that is uh, a little bit of an L, but all things considered, pretty much just uh, clawed back to even, then lost like a little bit over 10K into Kings versus Aces. And it's like so ironic where I think like the past two videos, I've had Aces versus Kings the other way around in the smaller games and then take a shot. Then you run <laughs> Kings into Aces. I don't know what it is, like something so poetic and beautiful about running Aces into Kings at one, two, then Kings into Aces. At 2550. I don't know what to say. Uh, we've got a large 2550 coming up tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but in the next video. That's gonna be a pretty tough game. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna buy in as big as I did today, to be quite honest, but that's gonna be up in the air. But it will be a big game regardless, and there'll be some uh, pretty big names and good players on the table, so uh, they'll be fun. So I hopefully we just run better and stop losing. This has been a pretty unfortunate losing streak, but there's that. Thanks so much for watching this video. Uh, if you made it to the very end, here's an open transparency of 
a poker player taking shots at these really big live stream games and getting kind of torched and wrecked. Hopefully things turn around. Um, I'm pretty confident and happy with how I played overall besides that first hand. But besides that, I think I played okay. Playing better than normal, just not running as good. Anyways, that's it. Ending the video now. Thanks so much for watching, sticking to the end. See you guys next time. Peace.